Ooh baby, whether you are a bride or a big fan of preserving Mother Nature's beauty, you're gonna love today's episode because today we are preserving my bridal bouquet in resin coasters. You know this is Laugh Cry DIY. You know it's after 9 p.m. and you know I'm in a panic because I got married a week ago and my bouquet is slowly dying. And although I did not consider myself to be a traditional bride who is overly sentimental, as these have started to fade, I've realized I desperately want to preserve them in a cool, functional piece of art. So today I'm gonna to show you some cool hacks to press and dry flowers and preserve them in resin coasters. Yay! So as you'll see, we have my beautiful wedding bouquet. Look at this. We went with kind of a vintage vibe. We have some blue, some light peachy pinks. So pretty. Shout out to my friend Jiki for making this for me. But here's the thing. Whether you want to preserve a bouquet or a beautiful flower you found on the side of the road, if you let it naturally die, it's gonna lose its color. We cannot have that. So naturally we want to preserve and dry these and press them flat. And there's a few ways you can do this. You can do the old school method of like pressing them in a book. You can dry them in kind of this like cool silica mixture. Here's the thing though. We don't have weeks to wait around for these to dry. So instead we're gonna do a really cool hack and that is <gasps> press and dry these in the microwave. What? I know. Okay, so here's what you need to do this. You need your microwave tray, a bunch of paper towels, and you need a heavy dish or dishes that are microwave safe. So as you can see here, I have stacked all of my Pyrex casserole dishes in one so that they will heavy weight onto the flowers. Obviously you need scissors and you need your beautiful flowers. I have to be honest guys, I don't want to cut these, but I'm going to for us. Okay, wait, one last picture to remember them by. Okay, so you're gonna put a sheet of paper towel down and basically you're gonna be creating a paper towel press with the casserole dish on top and you're gonna heat it and that's gonna dry it out while it presses. Science is incredible, you guys. For now, let's cut off the most beautiful pieces. Ooh, ASMR. If you missed it, I actually spray painted my wedding shoes to match this kind of shade of blue. You can watch that episode linked below. And honestly, when it comes to pressing flowers, you guys, more is more. Do as many as you can, because you just never know. Now, I do also wanna preserve greenery. Hold, please. The greenery, like the cute little ferny greenery on this one died. So I'm gonna snip them from another arrangement from the wedding. It's also 105 degrees in LA right now, so everything is wilting, including me. Okay, so we have these beautiful flowers, which are actually gonna press pretty flat, which is good. You can do them right side up, or you can do them upside down, which I think is actually a little bit easier sometimes, just to make sure they're like truly, totally pressed. And for larger ones, like this rose, you can actually like individually take off the petals. You can reshape it later, but it's kind of a cool way to make sure that it all lies flat, you know? I might preserve some of these blue ones flat, and I might do some kind of on the side, just for a little, different mix up of like perspective, I guess. So basically you're gonna make your whole arrangement flat. Also pro tip, if they're kind of dying, if you pick them up and shake them out, any of the loose dead ones will come out and then you can have like a nice solid one to press. All right, and now we're gonna cover that with the paper towel and press that bad boy down. And we're gonna microwave for 30 second increments. We're gonna check them after each one to see how they're crisping up or if there's still moisture. Let's do this first round. Guys, see, I wasn't lying, 9.25 at night. And we're making sure that's in there. And we're gonna do 30 seconds. Alrighty, let's see. Okay, so you guys can see the dampness on there. We're gonna do the same process, but we're gonna swap it out with fresh paper towels. Love this lighting, love this look, love this kitchen. At 9.30 at night with dishes, great. Okay guys, so we've gone through three rounds of like 30 to 45 seconds, and they're starting to get a little crispy. They still need more, but just keep the faith and go slowly. They'll go from kind of super damp to like lightly crisp. The thing is that you don't want to burn them. So again, go slowly. Okay, one quick note. It's actually smarter to dry similar size and type flowers together because they tend to have like kind of the same water content. That way the smaller ones don't get crispy and they all kind of go at the same time. Also, I've been upping these to like 45 seconds per just to speed it along. But like I said, you'll kind of get the cadence and like what works for you. And another one. Okay, not gonna lie, I've been at it for like two hours, but I have also been just like 
rotating through a bunch of different batches of them. But let me show you guys where we're at. I also decided to do more than just my bouquet. I pulled from other wedding arrangements, but look at this. They're so pretty. I will come back when these are all totally done. All right, friends, we have a ton of beautiful pressed flowers. I have a ton extra, but it's always better to have too many than too little. So you have a lot of options for laying out your designs. And now it is officially resin time. But before we dive in, let's have a very serious talk about resin. Resin is very fussy. There's a lot that can go wrong. She's very temperamental. You can get bubbles. It can cure improperly. You can get pet hair trapped in things. It also requires some very precise measurement. So I did a huge deep dive. Shout out to Kat's creation company on TikTok who did a huge series on resin do's and don'ts. That was very helpful and I learned a lot of great tips that we will use today to do this project. And before I say one more word, I'm gonna put my hair up so that we do not have my hair trapped in these beautiful coasters. So to do any sort of resin project, there are several many supplies you're gonna need. You're going to use tablecloth to protect against resin spills, measuring cups, popsicle sticks to stir things and maybe adjust placement, toothpicks to pop big bubbles, gloves for safety, a kitchen lighter or a heat gun or a hair dryer to heat and pop bubbles, microfiber towel, small spray bottle of pure rubbing alcohol. This is optional, it also can help get out bubbles. You need molds. These are silicone molds I got off of Amazon. I'll link everything below. One note about these, I wanted them to be fairly thin and dainty. You can get much thicker ones that I feel like to me are a little bit more like of a hockey puck. Those are better if you have kind of thicker flowers to preserve. I did mine super flat, super pressed, so these kind of daintier ones that are more shallow are good. And another thing, because I'm doing coasters and I knew that I would be putting various types of glasses on these, I made sure to get large four inch coasters because let me tell you what's happened to me in the past. Here is a whole stack of coasters I have never used once. Do you know why? Because the base of my wine glasses does not fit on these dang coasters. So I never ever use them. But luckily today, that's all gonna change. Okay, let's clean this up. Okay, so lastly, of course, you need your resin. And now I'd like to welcome you guys to resin talk. There are many types of resin on the market. There is UV resin, which is set with a UV light. There's epoxy resin, which is what we're using today. Epoxy resin comes with two portions. It's a resin and a hardener, and you mix these together to create your mixture to set your molds. There's also deep pour resins, which are for thicker types of things, and there's other kind of formulations. For us, for you, for all of our basic craft projects, epoxy resin is your friend. One note, I knew I was gonna probably be putting hot mugs on my coasters, so I did try to get a higher heat resistant epoxy. This is good up to like 200 degrees. So hopefully it doesn't mess up my coasters too bad when I put hot mugs on them. So as I was saying, the epoxy resin is two parts. Always read your manufacturer directions, but these sometimes come in different ratios. For this particular product, it's a simple one-to-one -one ratio. That means if you're doing one cup of one, you're doing one cup of the other. The pros will actually weigh their volume versus just using like measuring cups. We're not gonna be that fancy, but you really need to make sure your ratio is absolutely perfect or else it will not cure. Some resins are faster curing than others. This one says it's like eight to 24 hours. But one thing to note is that it has a 40 minute work time. So you wanna pay attention to how much you're mixing up and how quickly you'll be able to work with it. We're gonna mix these up in a minute, but before you do that, there are more important things to prep before you do this. First things first, arrange your flowers beforehand. I'm telling you, this takes a lot longer than you think and you don't have time to be like messing around with it in the molds. So pre-lay out all of your molds like I did. That way you know they fit and they look good. And most importantly, take a picture of them for reference so you can recreate them. One note about the designs I went for, I didn't do a ton of layering of flowers. I actually wanted there to be a fair amount of clear space so that you could really see each individual design. That was just a personal preference, but just FYI. So once you've taken your picture, put your flowers to the side. Now you need to clean your molds so that there is no dust, no particle, no hair, nothing in it that's gonna get trapped along with your design. So you wanna take your microfiber towel to wipe that out. And this is a very clever hack. Take some masking tape. And just like you would use it to kind of take hair off of your clothing, you can just, and you'd be surprised how much dust and hair and things like that are actually still on there. All right, so now it is time to prepare our resin. And I'm putting on my two different colored gloves because it's all I had. One broke, great. We're gonna do one nitro glove. I do have some other vinyl gloves there, but I know it's best to use nitro, so let's use our dominant hand with the right glove. Hold on. On this channel, we call that a moment of hell, and I haven't had one for a while, so good for me. Okay, as we said before, 
This epoxy resin is a resin and a hardener. And again, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Again, follow your own directions. So here's what I did. I took this plastic cup, which I did not have markings on, and I filled it up with one cup of water and then one cup of water and I marked it with a Sharpie. That way I know that those are two perfectly equal portions. Obviously I poured out the water, dried it off, but that way I know I have two equal portions. That's a helpful hack if you don't have a handy measuring cup to use like I didn't. Now, when you are doing resin pours, the name of the game, the whole goal of your life is to minimize air bubbles. You mix it too fast, you got air bubbles. Pour from too high, you got air bubbles. You do it in the wrong, climate and environment, you get air bubbles. You blink, you get air bubbles. So everything we're gonna do right now is to try to minimize those air bubbles and address them as they come up, as they inevitably will. So first things first, we're gonna pour this in. You have to pour this in a specific order. So we're gonna start with the hardener and then we're gonna pour in the resin. And to reduce those evil air bubbles, you wanna pour as close to the bottom as you can. Like you don't wanna do a high dripping down waterfall pour. And go very slowly so that you can get it to the right line. And there are already air bubbles, which I can see, but we will deal with later. One way to reduce air bubbles is to warm up your bottles in warm water before you pour. I didn't do that. Also make sure you have a level table, guys. Very important. Ooh, look at all those beautiful, beautiful air bubbles. They're all my children. And now it is time to mix this. You're gonna start stirring from the middle slowly, you don't wanna whip this, and you're gonna stir like this for five minutes. And as it starts to mix together, it's gonna to get streaky and cloudy, and then when it's fully mixed, it's gonna get clear. If you guys can see how it's kinda of cloudy, streaky, kinda of weird. All right, I've been stirring this about six minutes. It's looking good to me. And what are we gonna do now? We are gonna pour it into another cup. And once you pour it into another cup, you will likely see that it was not as well mixed as you thought it was. Yep, I can totally still see that striping in it. And by the way, guys, if you are a really good resin artist and you have more tips, please, please, please comment them below. Would be happy to hear them. All right, that's looking pretty good. I don't know if you guys can see, but there are quite a few bubbles. We're gonna let this sit for like 15 minutes so that all the bubbles can come to the top. There's a few ways you can get these down. You can spray with your alcohol, or you can just take a quick lighter torch. I know this is plastic, but just very, very quick, and just do that. That's all you need to do. So now it is time to pour the bottom layer into our molds. You wanna just do a really light pour just to fill the base. These are shallow, so I didn't wanna overfill them for the first placement. All right, and now it's time to fill them. So obviously this is just the first half of the pour. We're gonna do another layer so that we can like get those nicely sealed in there. So I'm gonna let these sit for like three to four hours so that we have that nice base. Again, you wanna keep an eye out for bubbles. You can pop them with toothpicks if you need. You can spray it with alcohol if it comes up again. Like I said, you can like hit them with the torch. Obviously don't set your flowers on fire. So far these are looking pretty good on my end. Then we're gonna come back and top it off for the final level. Alrighty y'all, we're back. These bad boys are more cured than not. They're staying, looking good. And I mixed up a new batch of resin. Psych, this is the old batch that already dried. This is the new batch. And we're gonna top coat these bad boys and let them set for 24 to 48 hours. I'm gonna keep an eye out for bubbles, but we're gonna let these cure and we're gonna come back and see what they look like when it's time to demold. It's been 48 hours, they are hard as a rock and they are ready to be demolded. Okay, can we talk about the clarity, the glamour, the colors, and a pretty remarkable lack of bubbles. But we are still not done putting these ladies in drag because there's one more thing to do, and that is I'm a gold girl and I just wanted to gold gild the edge. So the way this works, it's like a milky substance. If you guys haven't gold leafed something before, you just pop it on the edge. I'm just using a little Q-tip. You let it sit for a bit to get tacky and then you can stick your gold leaf on. Alrighty, these sides are tacky and let's see if I just straight roll onto it. Ooh, that actually works really well. Okay, but look how pretty. Ooh. Guys, I don't know where I would be without gold leaf in my life. If, if I ever had to do one of those magazine things where it's like, what are three things you need on a desert island? I would be like, gold leaf, obviously. Ooh, you ever seen a prettier edge? Don't think so, people. 
So I love these edges, they're so pretty, but I don't know why my heart just wants a little bit of an edge framing the whole design so that it really feels like a beautiful framed piece. And the problem is you have to make that little line with glue for gold leafing like this. Some people use like paint markers on these, which is another alternative. Um, but for me, I'm trying to figure out how do I do this while making sure that my glue just isn't like a weird freehand line around. And I realize that what I can do is use this Pyrex plate, which is like just smaller than the edge. And then a quick little bloop, 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 bloop. Because the Q-tip edge is kind of like its own thing. If you kind of hold it in a certain spot and then just turn like a DJ turntable, this is totally the way to do it. You can really kind of clearly see and you actually have more control. All right, let's do the top edges and see how and where that adhesive worked, if it did at all. Oh, okay, you guys see? All right, I'm gonna finish the rest of these up and we're gonna come back for our very big reveal. Well guys, we did it. Four beautiful coasters, a lifetime of memories preserved, and most importantly, I can finally fit a full wine glass on it. Anyways, thank you guys for coming along this journey. I am so happy with how they turned out. Bubbles, who, where, can't see them, don't know. So if you guys like crafts, if you guys like more DIYs, I send out a monthly newsletter with DIYs, decor, inspo, tips, fun stuff. You can sign up for that below. I'll link any products I used below. And most importantly, I'm gonna sit back, enjoy a beverage, and protect my table, which I've never done once on this channel. Okay, love you, bye.